Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. In this episode, we're carrying on from where we left off last time, where we made it uh, able for our units to attack enemy units. In this episode, we're going to make the enemy units fight back. So we're all about detecting when they've been hit and using that to attack us back. So for this, we're actually going to use a bit of the AI perception component for this because we eventually also want to include things like uh, sight as well as part of the game. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go into the AI controller, unit AI, and we're going to go add component and we're going to go and add AI perception. Now, AI perception for this right now, we're going to do damage. So we're going to go right hand side, change the census config here as new sense. And this one is going to be the damage sense config. Now, what that means is, is when we do the report damage event, what it's going to do is going to fire off this AI perception and trigger an event on here. So if we right click on AI perception, we can go add event and we're going to choose on target perception updated. This will fire off when we receive damage, as well as all the other uh, stimulus that we may have as well, like sight and sound and so forth. Uh, but again, we're focusing just on damage right now. So when they receive damage, we want them to be able to prioritize who they're attacking. So right now, he's not going to be doing anything. But what we need to do here is check the stimulus and check the actor that is triggering that stimulus. So with the stimulus here, we're going to drag this out and do a break. And here you can see all the information coming from the damage event. And the actor here would be probably the player character selection. So what we're going to do is take a look at our unit base like we did last time and we're going to make it so this event here triggers this content here. This content is going to trigger their action and to tell them to do something if they are uh, attacked. So what I'm going to do basically is copy most of this over to the unit AI. So the first thing we need to do is set their target actor. So over here we need to get the controlled pawn. Now at the moment the controlled pawn isn't accessible straight away what we do need to do is get a reference to it because right now it's just a generic pawn that we don't really care about so here i'm going to go and get the controlled pawn and i'm going to cast that to our unit base and this will be on the begin play event of our ai controller like so and on this we want to just store this as a reference make that to a variable so then back down here, we're going to tell our unit base here, yeah, we're going to get that, and we're going to set their target actor. And their target actor is going to be set to this actor here. So they're being told who has attacked them. And this is how they know who to attack. So we've got that. The next thing we want to do is we need to set it up so we know where they are and what our action should be. So the action stuff is we go back to unit base comes next and that set value as vector on the blackboard here so we're going to go back to our unit controller and get blackboard and from there we'll do set value as in this case we want as vector and in here the key name we're going to make literal and put in target location so the benefit of having the target location is if you've got like a ranged enemy attacking you, so they're hitting you from distance, this will actually tell them to close the gap and run up to them if they can't uh, attack from range. And this vector value is going to come from the stimulus location. Drag this over to here. Next, we need to tell it to do the action. So as we've got on unit base here, the next thing we've got is a set value as enum. And here we're plugging in the action. So we're going to do a blackboard again, copy that, and set value as enum. And plug that in. And the key name here, we're going to drag out and do make literal. And it'd be the same name as we've got on unit base here. So it's e action enum. So copy that and bring that across. And the enum value is going to come from our unit. So our unit base, we're going to drag out and do get. And here we want to get that action. So if it fight, if it's an attacker, they will attack. Okay. Okay. So that is that part done. I'm going to hit compile and save that. Next, I need to actually trigger the damage event. So it registers it. 
I'm going to go back to my unit base class here and find the damage event, which I currently just got a pinch ring going in. We'll get rid of that now. And on here, we're going to drag this out and we're going to report a damage event. The damaged actor is going to be itself, so self. And the instigator is going to be the damage causer here. That goes across to there. The damage amount we'll put into there. And the event location is going to be where you're currently at. So we'll drag from here and do get actor location. In fact, actually, what we'll do rather than that, it is the damage causes event location. Um, so if they are arranged, it will send over their details. And if you expand this open, you can also put in the hit location as well, which would be just their location. So I'll just put that in as that. Okay. Compile that and save that. So now that reporting is going to be happening, our AI is going to get that information set to them and they should attack our targets. So let's test this out. I'm going to go into my game, push play, and select our target, and right click on him. And I'll throw the first punch and then they'll retaliate him behind. There we go. So alongside this, we also want it to also tell its buddies to also do the attack. So when they do that, we also want to do another reporting uh, that will tell all of their buddies to uh, gang up and attack on this one here. So this we're going to add the site into it. So there's other things, but we'll work on the site next. So we're going to go back to our AI controller here. And on AI perception, we're going to add the site to this. <clears throat> Expand open the site settings. And here you've got the site radius and loose site radius and so on and so forth. And here you've got the half angle. So this depends on like uh, how how well they will see you in front of them. So 90 degrees means they'll see you with 180 degree range uh, of view. If you change actually to 180, they now have 360 degrees of view. So they can actually see you from every angle. So this depends on whether or not you want stealthy action in your game where you can sneak units past them. Most of the time you don't find that in RTS games. They usually are like they can sense all around them. So we're going to leave it as 180 in this case, but by all means, do as you wish to do. And I'm going to tick all these on because you need to, because Unreal has yet to ex um, expose these to the blueprint system. You can only use these in C++. And uh, the rest of this will leave as it is. I don't think we need to change anything there. Okay. So this will also trigger this same event and it will trigger both two times, once when it sees them and once when it loses sight of them. We need to make sure we know what they're doing. So here, successfully sense it's going to be used. So we're going to move all of this stuff along. So, and I'm going to put this into a branch. Okay, now I'll go into there. So now we only do this stuff if they are sensing us at all, either by damage or by um, by sight. So if I hit compile on this, they should now attack me. Like so. And you can see my character is also retaliating because they are also AI controlled. Notice that our collectors are also doing their attack emotion. This is because they think they are attacking, but they're not. They're actually collecting. But they'll have custom code on it later where they say they can't attack. Okay, so our guy is now getting ganged up on. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is have health on them so they can die. So let's go into our unit base. And we're going to add in here their health. And we'll do a unit health. And that's going to be a float value. And the damage they receive is going to come through here and we're going to change their health. So we're going to drag out the unit health and do minus. And we're going to take away the damage number. Drag that across there like so. We are then going to set that back to unit health. So set back health to there. Okay. Now you may also want to clamp this before you set it in. 
uh, this just makes sure that if you are using it for like healing or anything like that, you don't want it to uh, ex exceed the bounds of their health. So we're going to clamp the float with the max being their total health, which is going to be one. Okay, all that. And after that, we need to then check to see if they are still alive. So when unit health has been set, we want to check that now is actually still above or below zero. So I'm going to do below or equal to, less than or equal to, zero, and put that into a branch. And I want to make a custom event to make the death part of the character. So custom event, unit, death. And I'm going to call that up here. Unit, death. Okay. <clears throat> and for now, unit def um, won't do anything. It'll just call this event, which doesn't do anything. Uh, but what we are going to do is tell them to play an animation for their death. So for this, I'm going to make a variable. And that variable in animations here, we're going to have a new animation variable, which is going to be their death animation. So do death animation. And that'd be the same as these. So it'd be also a, a blend, oh, not blend space, um, an animation sequence. So change this to anim sequence. And uh, hold on, anim sequence, uh, this one, anim sequence base. And what we're going to use this for is um, to do and change their mesh animation unit. So at the moment they're using animation blueprint, but when they die, we don't need to use it anymore. We can just take it off of them. So I'm gonna take the mesh out and I'm gonna set the animation mode. And I'm gonna change it from using a blueprint to using an animation asset. And then I'm gonna tell it to play an animation. Play anim And the animation is going to be that death animation. So I'm going to drag that in and hook that into it like so. It's not looping because once they died, you want them to stay there and disappear after the amount of time. So that amount of time, we'll put a little delay in for, I guess, five seconds. And then we'll turn to destroy actor. Okay. Um, other things you may want to do, you may want to turn capsule collision off, you may want to turn off any uh, decals, you may want to turn off special effects like particle effects and sound and things like that. Up to you what you want to disable, just drag it all onto here and disable them. But let's go into this and uh, first thing I want to do is just tweak the attack code here. Base damage is not 10, it's actually going to be 0 0.1. Okay. And we're going to go back down to unit death. And we also only want them to die once, so we're going to drag out here, do a do once, and put that in right at the start. And uh, next we have to tell it to uh, turn off the AI controller, in other words, unpossess it. So we're going to get the AI controller, and that would be self in the controlled actor pin. And we want to check that it still has an AI controller, so you don't accidentally try and do this to something that doesn't have a controller. We're going to drag this out and we're going to do um, is valid. And you're going to choose the one with the quick little question mark. Put that in there. And if it is valid, we're going to take the AI controller here and we're going to tell it to unpossess. Right. So if it doesn't have an AI controller, that must mean it's like a building or something. So in that case, is not valid, we'll just carry on to set animation mode. And also unpossess will also go on to there too. Gonna hit compile and save that. Okay, right. Uh, next, we want it to only do the animation to play if the death animation is valid as well, because at the moment it's set to none. We don't want it to play a none animation. So I'm just going to move that along here, and again, we're just going to put an is valid node by right clicking and convert into validate get. Plug that in there and do that there. And that'll go up like so. And if it's not valid, we just want to go straight across and do this. When we're done there, we're going to go to our unit infantry now. And we're going to set that death animation on here. Search for death and put in the infantry's death animation. Follow that. And we've got workers out there too, so let's put one on the worker. 
and this death and we'll find a worker death okay and that's it let's just check out the infantry again for so check their base damage value yep 0.1 good okay excellent and unit health we're going to set the default of that to be on unit base to uh, one okay right so that'll do let's test this out now one thing you'll notice is that they will also attack each other rather than just the player and we'll make them you'll see some of them die in a second so it'll take 10 hits before they will die and there's my first death there okay so that's how it's going to work so the main thing we've got to do now is tell our enemy here not to attack their own kind the way we're going to do that is go to the ai controller and the ai controller here we are not only just set checking they're successfully sensed we also want to check the actor and check if they are actually friendly to us or not now currently the way we're doing this is on unit base we have this boolean saying it's a player unit or not and if it's a player unit then it's great that's a target for the ai to attack but more importantly, we want to see if it's the same or different to us. So on perception updated here, we're going to take the actor and we're going to check uh, what their player state is. So for this, I need to cast to it because it's a, a reference that isn't the child reference. I need to make it a child one. So we're going to cast to our unit base and put that in here. And then I want to get their boolean for is a player unit get player unit and i want to check that against our own unit base here and check if they are also the same as that so or right in this case not the same so here i want to get their player unit and if they're not equal not equal to that's when we want it to attack them so here we want this to go into an and for this boolean as well Do and and we combine it with that boolean there so if they be able to sense them and they must not be the same team as us compile and now save that and that's everything so let's test that out and they should all now just attack the player as you can see here that is what they're doing And there's my player's death. Perfect. And that brings us to the end of our episode. In the next episode, we'll make it so they can stop attacking by two ways. One, their target dies. Or two, their target runs away too far. So that's what we're going to do in the next episode. And you can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Where you can catch all my video content all before anyone else from just $1 a month. Big thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.